All right, well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's sort of a rainy day outside and I'm working on a project. And so I thought it made sense to actually make a video. And today I'm gonna talk about using the process builder. Now, we decided to use a process builder um, implementation for this specific project because it seemed to make a lot of sense. The project is a little bit complex. There's a lot of different events that can trigger actions within our Salesforce organization. And I wanted to build something that other people could understand and that other people could administrate and develop further on in the future. So it seemed like Process Builder was a good option as well as I didn't actually have a lot of experience using Process Builder since it's relatively new. So I thought this would be a good project to learn to understand some of the advantages and disadvantages. So without any further ado, I'm gonna give you guys a quick introduction to Process Builder, what it's good at, what it's not so good at, and how perhaps you could leverage it in an upcoming project. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and log into Salesforce. And as always, we go to our setup menu and we are going to search for process. Now you could search for process builder, whatever it is, but you can see down there under workflow and approvals, there's process builder, click on that. And it'll take me to this um, screen, which only appears the first time. So we'll create a new process. We'll name it send mail to new lead and what we're gonna do in this process is we're gonna send a welcome email. Now, as you can see here, we have three options. We can send it when a record changes, an event occurs, or it can be invoked by another process, which means actually that we can chain processes together. Now we're just gonna have this one work when a process is created, or when a new object is created, specifically when a lead is created. And as you can see, I'm only gonna start that process when a lead is created, not when it's edited or created. But in this sense, you sort of have functionality kind of like a trigger. You can do it when it's created or edited. Now let's add a criteria to that lead that's created. Let's call it a website lead. So I only want to do the following actions when the lead source of this web, or of this lead, is web. So we'll go ahead and select that pick list value. Now, as you can see here, I can choose conditions there, and I can even add rows and add additional conditions or I can actually just type in a formula. And this is really useful because sometimes you need to see if a field value is changed or something. Now, even if I don't use a formula, I can add some logic to those conditions. For example, if I had more rows, I could do something like one and, and then in parentheses two or three. And as you can see, I can just add rows there with additional criteria. Uh, but for now, I just, I just wanna check that lead source. So I'll leave it at and and We'll go ahead and remove those extra rows that don't have any conditions and we'll save it. So you can see our little diamond there gives us our conditions and let's create an immediate action. We can either do immediate actions or time-based actions, scheduled actions, but I essentially want to send a mail immediately. Um, now before we make an action actually let's go ahead and create another little criteria just for the sake of, of understanding how this works because uh, let's say this is a, a phone inquiry. Um, if, if the website lead is false, it'll automatically evaluate this one as well. Now let's create our action. Let's go ahead and we will create a record and we'll actually create a task to log the action because we're gonna send an email, but unfortunately, one of the drawbacks of Process Builder is with an email, it doesn't automatically log it as an activity against the record. So we need to do that manually. So I'll create a task um, and I will choose a field reference and I will assign it to the owner of this lead. So automatically we'll get a task saying sent the mail from the owner and we'll set that task to normal priority and we will mark it completed. And then we'll add a row and actually what we need to do is we need to search for um, a field called related to ID. And then we need to set that also to a field reference that is the lead ID. So basically we're associating this task with the related lead. So let's go ahead and save that action. And we can see that that action pops up right there, sent mail. Now we'll add another, which is the actual sending of the mail. And we'll create an email alert. We'll give it whatever name we want. And I don't actually have any email alerts created. I need to create an email alert. So I'll click create one and we'll click a new email alert. We'll give it a description and a name uh, and we'll select which object it, it's related to. Now I'm gonna call this one 
lead welcome email and we'll give it the a similar name and we will select lead as our object and now we need an email template i'm going to choose the new customer email this is just a default template that comes with a developer edition of salesforce but of course you can create your own templates and letterheads now i need to send it to the lead email field so i'll select email field and i'll add that to the selected recipients i can add additional emails and i can choose who to send this from now i'm going to leave it as current user's email address but before we save actually i want to show you that we can create an organization-wide email address. And this is just a little bonus piece in here. Um, but let's say we wanted to send it from, you know, team at SFDC guide uh, and a, you know, have a no reply email address like that. We could create an org-wide email address and we could use that there. And that's really useful and much more professional. So now we have our email alert. Let's go back to our process builder and let's go search for the name of that email alert. And there it is. So we created an email alert, we associated it with that action, and now we have two actions that will run if it's a website lead. Now let's quickly, let's just do the same, let's create another task if it's a phone lead, but I wanna pause here and I wanna look at some of these options. So we have Apex, create a record, email alerts, flows, post a chat or processes, quick action, submit for approval and update records, a ton of different functionalities. And this is really useful. This is one of the best things about Process Builder is that you have all of these options. and in a later video, I'm going to show you how we can create an invocable Apex class, which is a specific type of Apex class that we can use within Process Builder to do more complex actions and to evaluate sort of more complex criteria. But all of these are really useful, and that's one thing that I really, really like about Process Builder. So um, we're just going to create a record here. We're going to create another task, and um, we'll just call this one phone call. And we'll do the same thing. We'll create another task, et cetera. We'll associate it with uh, the lead and the owner. And we'll go ahead and save it. Now, I want to mention really quickly what these scheduled actions are. I made a video that's been pretty popular about time-based workflows. Now, this is my preferred method of actually doing time-based things now is using Process Builder. So we can put in two days after, and then we can add an action. We can even put in 48 hours after, you know, we can use any combination of, of hours or days, um, and we can do the same. Anyways, we'll go ahead and activate this version because now what I want to show you is that Process Builder also has a pretty primitive version of version control. So once we've activated that, we see an active version, and we just have version 1. Now I'm going to go back into that version, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone it. Now once I've cloned it, I'll go ahead and save as a version of the current process. And once I've cloned it, what I can do is let's just edit something really small. We'll just change the name of one of these actions. Um, and we'll go ahead and save that. Now we'll activate this version. And automatically, it's going to tell us that it's going to deactivate any other active versions of the same process. Now we can see we have version 2 and version 1. And it's saving that history for us. All right, so that was it. Um, I hope that video was useful to you guys. I hope you give Process Builder a try and some of your future projects if it makes sense for you. Uh, I think it's a really useful tool to learn and I think it kind of represents Salesforce's new move into the lightning design system and into the new UI and into giving administrators and users a more visual graphic way to understand their business processes. Um, so I wanna thank you guys for watching and if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one.